Hey guys, welcome to the Pitmaster Secrets Podcast. I'm Frank Cox. I got my buddy Jesse Stanley here from Pitmaster Pastor. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're going to do a quick interview right here. He's a guy that you're going to have to be watching now. I'm telling you, he's uh, he's come out of nowhere. He's the rookie in this barbecue uh, industry here, but be watching. It's going to be an interesting story. Anyway, going to queue up the intro and we'll be right back. You're listening to the Pitmaster Secrets Podcast. Well, welcome to the show, Jesse. How are you today, man? Oh, I'm glad you're so here. Much. Yeah, yeah, thanks yeah. so much, Frank. You drove, what, uh, four and a half hours to get yeah, up here? Four hours, Missouri. four hours from Tulsa. It wasn't a bad drive up I-44. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And did, how long uh, have you been to this part of Missouri before? I never have. Really? I never this have. This is the Ozarks, dog. This That's is the furthest <laughs> I've been, and I'll tell you, it's beautiful. Yeah, uh, there's a lot yeah. of trees, a lot of hills, yep. some rivers here yep, and there. rivers, past a few yep. rivers. And, uh, well, anyway, so... Um, we're going to talk to you a little bit about what is uh, what your mission is and stuff like this. It's really cool mm-hmm. what you're doing. Um, you actually came up here because you've been doing some research and stuff, and you decided you want to try to tie into this ugly drum stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So we've been talking now off and on for about a month. Yep. Really, just about the barbecue industry and different things like this. And uh, so I got a few questions for you. You ready to I'm go? I'm ready. I'm ready. This is All like right. the hot seat. Yeah, a little questions. bit. <laughs> a little bit. We got five. But, <laughs> five, okay. Um, so anyway, so the first thing I want to talk about is uh, you've got this thing you call barbecue myth busting. Yeah. Okay. Tell me about that a little bit. Yeah. What is barbecue myth busting? All right. So Here's what, here's what we know, that there's a guy somewhere right now in his mm-hmm. backyard mm-hmm. wondering why what he's cooking doesn't look or seem to taste like the things he's seeing on YouTube or mm-hmm. on Instagram, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And he's believing all these things that he thinks is going to help him achieve great barbecue, whether okay. it is the rub he uses or the cooker that he's cooking with or the temp he's taking it to. Mm-hmm. And so For bar- internal temp. For internal yeah. temperature, mm-hmm. yep. So barbecue myth busting is kind of dispelling those myths uh, that you can't create great barbecue in your backyard. And Dude, that's people. awesome. So the average uh, new guy to barbecue is just getting pounded with information from all sides, and he's got to, it's up to him in his in his journey to try to figure it all out. What mm-hmm. sticks, what doesn't, mm-hmm. you know, what what are we doing here? And that's right. that's kind of your mission. You're you're going to go in there and and almost take on the challenge of what yep. actually does work and what doesn't work. Yep. So uh, why did you start it? Let's let's talk a little bit about that. Kind of like a uh, origin. How did you right. how did you figure out that you want to do this? Well, all right. So going way back, obviously, uh-huh. I always have loved barbecue and mm-hmm. watching somebody like my dad. And my dad, uh, he cooked on everything from a Weber kettle uh, to a gas grill. Uh, all the way to an offset smoker, like mm-hmm. he did, he did everything and uh, gave you a love for barbecue mm-hmm. and what it was like. So, man, lo- knowing that I've always loved barbecue, so I started to set out and like, how can I help other people mm-hmm. um, be able to accomplish great barbecue in their backyard and love what I've come to love in barbecue? Oh yeah, you totally. know uh, the community that it brings, mm-hmm. it's which is definitely awesome. brings community. That's for sure. Yeah, I mean whether it's whether it's your neighbors uh-huh. or you know, going uh, other other guys who are trying to achieve great barbecue, it creates a great community. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, man, I set out just with that goal in mind, and uh, it all started just with me getting my first grill and my first smoker, and which actually was a Traeger grill, mm-hmm. and just finding all the things that I could create with that. Um, mm-hmm. But man, I know that there were, had, was a lot more when I got my first Weber kettle and for sure could cook with charcoal and. Yeah. Well, you know what's interesting? Um, I don't know. You follow Tuffy Stone, I'm sure, uh-huh. a little bit here and there. And uh, I saw something that he posted a while back. You know, basically talking about what you're saying here mm-hmm. is uh, his. Sorry, I've got a technical thing I'm working on here. Bear with me you're one good. second. Um, anyway, he had uh, he talked about how his dad. Got his start on a Weber kettle, you right? Know, which that was awesome because actually, I think uh, you know everyone has been exposed to a Weber kettle at Everybody. some point, you know, and they're kind of the ones that brought it out and started like the the backyard chef kind of mm-hmm. dad thing, you know, yep. with, with barbecues. So, so yeah, that's cool, man. And uh, 
you know, uh, talk a little bit more because I know we've talked in the past and you talked about your first fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so I want to hear my, that one. I mean, my first fire, like, believe it or not, I was I was in college, so I was 18 years old. I'm a mm-hmm. freshman in college, and it was a beautiful spring day in Minnesota. I went to college in Minnesota, and we kind of, uh, me and some buddies were like, well, let's go to a park. Let's do something, mm-hmm. and let's grill some food. So we went to the grocery store, and we got everything that we thought we needed to make a fire mm-hmm. and cook some burgers. We got charcoal. We got burger, and we decided to grab some lighter food because that's sure, how we that's thought. What you did. Yeah, that's what you did. It's right there by the charcoal, right? So we grabbed a bottle you of that. We must need it. We <laughs> must need it. Uh, went out to the park, loaded up this grill of charcoal, and just doused it with the lighter food. Mm-hmm. And we threw a match on there, and it, it lit. Flames were going, and as soon as those flames started to go down, we thought, Man, we gotta add more lighter fluid because we gotta keep those flames going. Dude, so, I'm guilty too. I did that. <laughs> yeah. Right. So throughout the whole cook, that's all it was was us dousing lighter fluid to keep the flames up. And those burgers, man, they tasted disgusting. Yeah. <laughs> all they like did, petroleum. Yes. Yeah. Like straight up petroleum. Like we threw them away and went and got fast food. Like, <laughs> so <laughs> we all start somewhere, right? Yeah. Um, so so your discovery through that process was my. I must be doing something wrong. Right. Yeah, and then that's what led you probably to start exploring, like, how to actually light a fire and not need that junk. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So what was your encounter with, with, like, did you ask somebody about it, or did you, who did you ask? Yeah, well, I called my dad. I <laughs> knew he was going to say that. <laughs> Everybody calls their dad or their mom one. Dad, this, this was terrible. What did I do wrong? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's the way it goes. So do you cook for time and not for temp? So, uh, or vice versa? Vice versa, man. Mm-hmm. You cook for that internal temperature, internal temperature um, of of your meat or whatever you're cooking, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, you can say a brisket's going to take this long. If you pull it off after ten hours, because someone told you it's going to take ten hours, and you're mm-hmm. going to probably have a tough, chewy piece of meat. Yeah, yeah. So, is there any kind of tips that you could like throw out there for the guy that's listening here that maybe never, you know, lit a f- like maybe had a similar experience to what you just talked about? Like, yeah. So go along with the the cooking at internal temp thing, like something in there. Is there some secret you can let out that yeah. these new guys need to hear? Yeah. So here's the thing. Be patient okay. with barbecue. You yeah. Be patient. So whether it's you messed up a cook like I did with my mm-hmm. charcoal the lighter fluid dilemma, mm-hmm. or it's you cooked a brisket and it was super tough. Mm-hmm. Both of them take patience in a different way, right? Yeah. So if I'm going to say I'm going to cook a brisket, I'm, I'm waiting till that thing gets to 203 and, mm-hmm. and I see that that 203, thing, huh? Yeah, around 203, okay. sometimes yeah. more. Um, that's when I start checking it mm-hmm. and, and making sure that it is the consistency mm-hmm. and it looks good. Good for me. So, so do you patience. think that cooking at a at a lower temperature, the internal temperature is is done at a lower temp, is more tender, like one ninety seven, something like that, and hotter you cook, the the higher the temp. Is that true? You think, or is that a myth also? Hey, stay stay tuned. That's something okay. We're gonna test. Cool. That's You're something gonna test we're going to test. Right on. That's yeah. good, man. <laughs> now, this is going to be fun. It's it's going to be really cool watching watching your journey with this thing because. Uh, I mean, you know, there's a lot of guys out there that have done something similar, you mm-hmm. know, um, over the years. But I think I think it's I think it's time for somebody else to come in and, yeah. and like you know somebody fresh and, yeah. and do it. You know, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. It's fun. So I, I think that uh, some of the guy I have a guy in mind that mm-hmm. I'm thinking of that that has done something like this and uh, like what you're doing with barbecue myth busting. And he's done a fantastic job over the years, but he's been doing it a very long time. And mm-hmm. and so it's almost like maybe some of the a lot of the the folklore, barbecue folklore has been caused sure. by by the uh, some of the ways that they've said to do things. And I wonder sure. about that sometimes. Yeah. But uh, anyway, it'll be awesome. So we use the the phrase smoker journey around here. We mm-hmm. actually do that a lot. Right. Um, what does your smoker journey mean to you? Yeah, uh, my my smoker journey to me, uh, it's something that I I get to give back with. Right, mm-hmm. I get to give back to my family. Mm-hmm. Uh, my smoker journey is building is building on that, but also just man, as I get to give back to other people and sure. uh, the love of barbecue, what's the community that it brings in that man? Mm-hmm. I uh, man, I. I I've grown more in the community and uh, mm-hmm. met more people mm-hmm. through barbecue than I yeah. ever thought I would. And that's part of my smoker journey. It means a lot to me. You know, speaking to that, this is awesome because, like, I remember back in the day when I got my start. Right? Uh-huh. 
I, I had our we had our forum. We started back in 2010, but I didn't actually get on any social media, Facebook or nothing, until like you know probably 2012, something right. like that. Yeah. And I was going to be one of those guys that just held out forever and never got on, you know. But mm-hmm. anyway, we wound up on there. So, but the funny thing is, is that like I remember the day that I was like, "Gosh, I want to just hang out with barbecue guys." And right. so, Facebook was about adding people you knew at the time. And I was just like, "Screw it! I'm just going to start adding everybody who's got a chicken leg in his hand, yeah. or, or sitting in front of a grill, or For whatever real. it is." Everybody says barbecue in their name, you know. Mm-hmm. And I just started adding everybody. Well, it's kind of funny because. That all that has that is the way the barbecue industry is. You'll get a bunch of guys add you as friends you never even heard of, oh, yeah. but they've been watching you, or you came up in a feed and they thought you were interesting. Yep. And so it's almost like you can form relationships with people on the other side mm-hmm. of the world. I know we have with Smoker Builder, yep. form relationships with people on the other side of the world that never even heard your name before. Right. And uh, you know, one day they pop into your shop and whatever it is, exactly. and you're just like, dang, dude! Exactly. I can think of Mikasa sixty six on our forum. Mm-hmm. You know, Alan, he's from New Australia. You know, wow. and uh, like New South Wales or something like that yep. in Australia. Dude, we talked back and forth for two years, and one day popped in the shop. That's who made that little cooker on the other side of the glass. That's over crazy. There. You know, I mean, it, yep, it came up here. Awesome. Anyway, just all kinds of memories, man, and relationships are awesome. So right. speaking of that, where do you see yourself in the future, say five or ten years? What do you, what do you see Pitmaster Pasture? What does it look like to you? Uh, if you can future cast, are you scared I, of that? I'm scared of it. I'm scared <laughs> of it. But if I if I could future cast, uh, so what, what, I, what I could see in the future is, man, being able to just to produce great content that helps people. Sure. Mm-hmm. Great great content that helps people. Mm-hmm. Um, so currently, you know, you see the stuff that I'm doing. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's pretty pretty basic, and it's just me. Um, but I do believe that there's a future in uh, bar- mm-hmm. Pitmaster Pastor and Barbecue mm-hmm. Mythbuster. So do you see uh, like a uh, do you see like a uh, movement of Barbecue Mythbusters? Yeah. Yeah, that's cool, dude. Yeah, I love it. That's that's definitely uh, that's that's really interesting because like the barbecue forums back in the day like the smoke ring and, mm-hmm. and the barbecue brethren and of course our side wasn't really much for cooking because we all just built pits but we had our own myth this we were busting mm-hmm. and then some of these other ones you know the the cooking and stuff that went on and people trying new things like the fatty was actually born on the barbecue bread right. site you know yeah. years ago it was a joke you know a lot of this stuff that <laughs> no. comes out because mainstream was started as a joke mm-hmm. you know some guy did just to say oh we'll just put more bacon yeah. on because this thing sucks you know <laughs> anyway it's just awesome to see that develop as, yeah, as time awesome. goes so let's talk a little bit about Pitmaster Path Pastor uh, directly. Like what sure. you you call yourself Pitmaster Pastor, which to me the name is self explanatory. But right. what does that actually mean? It, it so, is self explanatory. But yeah. I've actually had guys ask me, uh-huh. uh, "Is it because of El Pastor Tacos?" Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, that's hilarious. I never thought of that. Yeah, I'm like, no, it's not. I'm, <laughs> I'm actually a legitimate pastor. So, that's cool. Uh, over the past ten years, uh-huh. I've, I've worked in churches, and uh-huh. uh, man, so my what. Pays the the youth pastor and, specifically. Youth though, pastor, right? yeah, yeah. yeah. So specifically good. work with students, grades six through twelve. Yeah. Right. Well, that's cool. And uh, so, does does your faith have a uh, impact on your barbecue? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. You gotta say yeah to that one. And I think <laughs> you could. I think you could see it throughout this conversation. Yeah. Like, uh, community, like yeah. it's a word that I kept saying. Community but, contribution. Um, it it yeah. just. Yeah, I hear you it say does, that a lot. man. The mm-hmm. thing that it gets to bring people together, and and I truly believe that, but. Mm-hmm. That you can bring people together through barbecue. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so that's really good, man. So, I got to ask you a question. Mm-hmm. Um, so, one of the things that just occurred to me is you came up here to buy a Draftmaster drum smoker. Yeah. Okay. So you're here. You brought a draft. Are you going to start busting some Draftmaster myths? Do you think they're myths? Uh, there might be. Is there a challenge there? There might be a challenge. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Uh, so what do you have in mind? I mean, I could throw a few things out there that I say. Yeah. And you could literally take this podcast and treat it as Frank's challenging you let's, to let's uh, bust a couple myths to see if I'm right or wrong. Let's do it. All well, right. you know, uh, yeah, you know one that I've been thinking of. Okay. Uh, off right away. So uh-huh. one of the things you say is that Hit you, me with it. you can run this thing for up to 20 hours yeah. on one basket of charcoal. Yeah. So that's going to be one of the first things we're going to So check. true story, the um, which you have a two-piece adjustable baffle plate that you're bringing home mm-hmm. also because you're going to test the baffle plates. Yep. Right. 
So, uh, by the way, he bought all this stuff. This yeah. is this is not me giving it to him <laughs> to test and get better results. This is straight up unbiased. Like he's going to hold my feet to the coals. He mm-hmm. told me that when we started this conversation. Mm-hmm. So, anyway, um, you're bringing that two piece adjustable baffle plate home. So, yep. the heat shield, the block off plate, and the basket, um, and the uh, that was all original. And then the only thing difference between the first time we tested it and now is the the adjustable baffle plate. Sure. So, because now we have the super tuner also, but the right. adjustable baffle plate was the first one. So with the uh, with the original baffle, um, with my finger set, I always say 30%, that's two mm-hmm. fingers open on the, a little more than two fingers open on the adjustable. That thing ran for 38 hours. 38 hours. 38 hours, I got it on video, yes. Wow. Well, not the whole 38 hours, right, but, but yeah. yeah. But here's the king. Here's the clincher. Okay, I wasn't cooking right. when I did it. I didn't open the lid a whole lot. But the next morning, so I started at 7 a.m. The next day, 24 hours later, 7 a.m., I had to shake the can a little bit just to, because the bridged, you know. Mm-hmm. I didn't open it up, but I shook it. It was running about 200 when I got to work. And I shook the can, and then it came back up to 250, sure. and it finished out at 38 wow. hours Yeah, when it started to go down. And that was when it was down to about 150 is yeah. when I killed it, you know, because basically by then it started to cool right. off it's and die. Out. Yeah. So let's see what you can do with that. It was 32 degrees outside, and it had degrees. snowed overnight. And okay. there was that's one of the reasons it was down in temp was because it was – the lid's an inch tall and it was holding water on it. Okay. So yeah, yeah. Anyway, let's see what you can yeah. do. Maybe you can do forty-five. Who Maybe knows? I, can. I don't know. But and if we was doing that at two hundred and fifty degrees. Right, so just so I have it well documented here. Yep, two fifty. That's so that's my claim. We'll see. We'll see if you can match it, beat it, yeah. or if I'm full of crap. Yep. We'll fi- we're you think find I'm full out. of crap? No, I don't. You don't think I'm full I of crap? I personally don't, but we're gonna find out. <laughs> A lot of other people do. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So we don't publish 38 hours, but we do say that you can get like, you know, 20 hours on. Yeah. And that's with lump is what I was right. using. So, but uh, anyway, well, guys, I know I had a good time with this episode. Um, you know, if, if you have an interest in uh, um, in becoming uh, or coming on the podcast one day, you know, just uh, shoot us a message. You know, we'll try to fit you on. I love it when people come by the shop and we're able to dig down into your barbecue journey and kind of figure out where you're at and what's what's important to you and uh you know let the let the listeners here uh hear what you got to say and uh you know while you're at it please go down below wherever you're watching or listening to uh hit the subscribe button and leave us a review we really would like that uh tells us if we suck or not (laughs) i hope we don't suck but we try hard so anyway uh also if you got any questions or anything like that you know shoot us a message on social media or uh, an email, or even just call us. doesn't matter to me. And uh, let us know what you'd like us to cover on the show. I think pretty soon here we got some more technical information coming up. So, uh, and uh, anyway, guys, until next time, light a fire, cook something, uh, teach somebody the barbecue culture. Anyway, we'll see you guys later. Thanks for listening. Mm-hmm.